with the top team in town, Stephen Rowe and Chris McDermott. And good afternoon. Welcome to the 5AA Sports Show. Bone and Rowie with you for the first time. Hopefully it's not the last Cornsy. Well, he sailed off into the sunset. But we'll still have him as a part of our 5AA family, which I think is absolutely great. Now, big show too. We've got Brad Crouch from the Crows, Ports, Brad Ebert, Wolsey. Your calls, most importantly, 8223 0000. Or you can send Bone a text on 1399 1395. Now, Bone, if I shot Bambi, you killed JFK. <laughs> well, hello, Stephen. No. Did see Graham today, actually. He, he does look in, in. in good form. Didn't and he? Uh, Didn't he? He looked very happy Healthy with his decision. Healthy and happy. I know. Healthy scary. and happy, unlike you and I. <laughs> I've, aged, I've been here about three hours now. Looking forward to it. Such a great weekend in sport. Good wins to both local teams. And we'll speak to, to Brad Crouch, as you said, Brad Ebert as well. They'll be very happy. Do you Port Adelaide at four and zip? You nearly can't miss now. It is nearly, it's not quite time to book your finals ticket. You shouldn't miss from here. You I should was, not miss. I was going to ask that question. Port four uh, zip. Surely now you're gunning for top. Hey, surely. Come on, call it. We want Port fans to call it. 8223 0000. Their best start to an AFL season ever. Two things, other than they're playing great footy, and they are. They're playing terrific, exciting, hard, competitive footy. By the numbers, Justin Westoff right now is the best player in the AFL. And Don Cassisi's value to this club should never, ever, ever be undervalued again or underestimated. Liked his job? Oh, crikey's. Well, the second quarter was so important with Ablett having his 15-odd in the first quarter. Dom comes on him, I think, three in the second, six in the third. It was a sensational job. But do not underestimate the West Coast Eagles because they can turn Port Adelaide's season, not quite on its head, but just give it a little bit of a, a full stop at the moment because they'll be narky. And they'll be very good this weekend. I know they're not quite at their best, but do not underestimate the West Coast Eagles. And I think you're going to see a top four contender, maybe pretender in the West Coast, face an up-and-comer. And we'll just see where Port Adelaide are. I think this weekend is the biggest test for Port Adelaide this year. Look, look, it is. It's Saturday night, immediately after the, the Carlton game. West Coast did the Crows a favour by losing to Carlton. Imagine if Carlton was zipping four. You'd never oh. beat them at the MCG. Now they possibly can. We'll turn to them. But Port fans, eight double two three double O double O. Do you agree? Justin Westoff right now. Boy, is he playing ripper footy. Dom Cassisi. And who's who out of you out there, Port fans, is willing to put it on the line and say, you know what? We're gunning for the top eight. I think internally they would be, and I can't wait to ask Brad Ebert that. The Crows' bone, a lot better. Just weight of numbers. Their work rate, their team defence and structures look their back. Players starting, do you think, regain a bit of form? And I think everything Sando selected, backed in and changed work. And we can go through them. Lynch is the lead up forward. It was good. Was fantastic. Very good. Outstanding. Poor Pleasure, he'd be struggling to get back into that spot with Lynch in that form. Dangerfield one out in the square. What more do you have to say? Yeah, you're bullish and you've been bullish uh, ever since they won. I'm not convinced because the Bulldogs, they were deplorable. They were diabolical. They are the worst team in the competition on that form. They had nothing. They had nothing. No midfield, no forward, no defence. They had nothing. They were dreadful. Dead set dreadful. Well, look, they were. And I agree. And we called the game. They kept them goalless for two and a half quarters. That says a lot. That says a lot about their defensive structures and mindset to keep them to that. Yep. You're saying they're that bad that anyone could have done it. Nearly. See, I'm not. Nearly. Nearly. I think it inflated. I just hope the Crows don't think we're back, like probably a lot of the supporters do, on the basis of that game. Because, you know what, I don't like their forward line. I think it was a good night for their defence, a good night for their midfield. I don't like the forward line. Paddy Dangerfield's not playing forward against Carlton. He's going straight back into the heat of battle. He's going straight back in the middle, uh, into the midfield against Pretty Judge. Pretty much won the game from I, the four goals. In that I weather, do not like their forward line at all at the moment. The structure doesn't quite feel right. Taylor Walker's going okay, but not great. Josh Jenkins is going okay, but not great. They're all going okay, but not great. And they're going to meet a pretty brutal Carlton on the weekend. Scotty Thompson, match review panel, can accept a reprimand booked for engaging in rough conduct with goods. I'm Lucky. a little Yeah, yeah. But you know. I thought it would be thrown out. Lower no end of the scale. Answer. Well, it's funny because I think you and Bass said uh, no case to answer. No case to answer. And uh, Dylan and I thought, no, he's in a bit of strife. It wasn't his elbow. It was sort of, uh, was it the forearm? It was his or... shoulder that slid up. Yeah, and case... then as he hit him, he's lifted his elbow you to make what? it look like he Dead, elbow. set, it... lucky. Lucky. What about, what about the crowd? 24,684. Second smallest crowd in Crows history. Only two games ever under 25,000. Was it more about the weather and the time slot and the Bulldogs? Or, or, and here's the question to the Crows fans, are you with Bone 
you're still suspicious. The jury's out. I don't think they're back. Or are you with me? I saw enough to say I reckon they are back. That means they can beat Carlton? Like yep. you're saying, this is yep. the role. This is yep. the kickstart. Yep. Yeah, I'm just not quite convinced. They. I mean, look at the Bulldogs inside field. I mean, they had the ball in the right zone so many times, more than Adelaide couldn't kick a score. Their forward lines were just, was just almost non-existent. They had no no smalls and they had nobody in their forward line, nobody to go to. I understand what you're saying. I reckon you're a week early. Crows fans, are you back or are you still suspicious like Bone? Here's another one. We've been smashed for giving Ott and BOG. Our no, you've no. well, how, sorry, yeah, yeah. You've been smashed. Bass and I gave Ott and Best, then Danger, then Sloan. You did go Danger, which I probably in hindsight now have woken up. Because Cornsy's come in. Typical Cornsy into the sports he's, he's not Rowie. here anymore. He's not here anymore. Rowie! Dangerfield was best! So who do you think was best? Paddy Dangerfield pretty much won it. But Orton's game, are you glad he's back? I he thought it was is back. Emotion behind it because Andy Orton, we've seen him come back and play okay, but fall over, look slow, and look a little no, bit out back. of sorts and not back consistently. But his best game by a mile for two years, played mm. really, really well. And then on, on that emotion, I think you probably swayed. I, I thought Rory Sloan's game was as good as anybody. I mean, talking about their best player yeah. for the year so far, got to be Rory Sloan. That's best two weeks in a row or in Rory, their best three. Rutten, Douglas. Yeah, I, I think Sloan's yeah. been the genuine standout for them this year. So, uh, good question on eight double two three double o double o. Who was their best, and is it the turning point for them at round four? Is this the kickstart because I it's Carlton it next week? You know what? It's Hawthorne the week after. One and three, it can be one and five very, very easily and very, very quickly. And you know what? A one and five, I don't know. You can make it at one and five. Well, hang on, they've won two games. Or oh, two and five game. Yeah. Well, they're two and two now. They're in the eight. Hey, when's two the and last four. time? When's the last time Crows and Port were in the eight? Tell me that one, one triple nine thirty ninety five. Hey, just other games. I'm not Brendan ringing. Goddard's raw emotion after the Bombers was. Well, they smashed the, his team Saints. Did you like it? Do you like crying? Do you like you your reckon? sporting? St- well, I don't. But I, I you know what? There's no, you softened. Me- no, I haven't. I don't like seeing it. And he did cry. There's no question about that. Um, and I don't like to see my sporting stars show their emotion. I think you can do it behind closed doors. But he wasn't crying for himself. He was crying for his team. And that that. Cut him a little bit of sleep. None. Kim Hughes cried for himself. Paul Curia cried for himself. Do you accept the cry that um, Pete Sampras did? See, I put it in the same ke- kettle of fish. I'm worried about St Kilda Football Club because Nick Revolt's a crier. Amachi Hudson was a crier. Oh, I think I can see a, a, a history of, of criers coming out of the St, St. Kilda St. Football Kilda Club. Foot, but he's no longer there. They've got every reason to cry yeah. too. They've been a disaster. Here's Brendan Goddard after the game. Listen to this real emotion. It's obviously pretty, I'm pretty emotional right now, mate, so... Yeah. Mate, it's tough coming up against your old side, mate. You've been having 10 years. Uh, mate, it's tough coming up against your old side. I don't know that, mate. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's a weird feeling, mate, a unique situation. and I'm emotional, I don't know why. It's obviously, I love the footy club, and they meant so much to me and the boys. Yeah. I don't want to see them lose, and it's pretty tough. What did it... <laughs> There you go. That's the, that's the we bread. tried to get him on the blower today. And yeah, no, and that's what we heard. Yeah. He did choose to leave, didn't he? He did. He chose to, to leave, leave as a free agent. Maybe it shows he's not happy with the decision. Well, you know what? Live Bad luck it. and toughen up. Um, and here's the other one. Eight double two three double o double o. Have a chat about that. Stephen Motlot, right? He's a gun small forward for Geelong. In ripping form. In ripping form. He said this on Channel 10's before the game. Listen to this. What is going on down at Geelong? Can I ask you that? In all honesty, you're never terrible. You've been at the top for so long Mate, now. they win the premiership every second, every second year. year. Yeah. Every odd year they win it. You want to know the real truth? What? Don't get a sarder in there. <laughs> <laughs> is it that funny? That is joke of the year. <laughs> Stephen is getting blasted from some media bone and the goody goody two shoes out there that's saying it's no laughing matter. But you know what? A bit like Goddard, don't we want characters? Do we want sterile, boring, robotic footballers? I reckon that comment was fine. It was taken in the jest it was in. Of course it was. A little bit with Goddard. He was emotional.
He was emotional. You the know, girls would have been just... My daughter's cried. It was said, funny. Oh, poor little Brendan. It was yeah, funny. Yeah, that was funny. It was funny. I got a couple of uh, emails coming through. One triple nine thirty ninety five. If you want to speak to uh, either of us or email us. Port Adelaide for the finals. And a big question mark. Not sure yet, says Simo from Kadena on the weekend. I recall all the hoo-ha when Ken Hinckley was appointed. Several commentators suggested he was the only man left for the job. What a great comeback from Hinckley when he said, I'm not the only man for the job. I am the... Right man for the job. Yeah, Great response, call. Kenny. You've got to love the way he's going about his craft. Oh. Of all the new blokes, there's something just measured about him and balanced about him and really impressive about him. I like the way he started his coaching career. It, ever since he stepped foot in there too. We're going to take a break. Eight double two three double o double o. Plenty to give away. Brad Crouch, Brad Even. The two Brads to talk about the games on the weekend. I'm going to throw this in, Bone, and they're not going to tell you because they never told me. Our mystery voice for Bone Timber, $2,500. Got no idea. Got Back no idea. Back after this.